Bill Cuthbert, Cuthbert's dad had to sleep. And that about second or third day after the sleep went up through town and wound up where it did. About where the Kodiak rental place is now where they rent equipment and stuff. Um, he had 4,000 king crab aboard. Now you can take the worst stinking mess you've ever run into and double it. And the carbon uh, dioxide in there from rotting crab is tremendous. And uh, uh, Russ Wright and another guy that was with him in partnership brought a cat down there and they opened up a trail into the Salip. They got guys in there with gas masks from the military unloading all the crab off this thing. Threw them in that dump truck and went out, dumped them in the water someplace and let them float off. Because they were sticking down so bad you couldn't stand it. Just after the tidal wave was over, there was a gal up at ACS, which is the Alaska Communication System sitting on the hill. She had uh, communications with boats and stuff, and she would try and answer calls, people calling in and looking for certain boats and stuff. And she was the main apex of communications at that time. And Bill Cuthrop's dad there called in and gave his call sign. She knows them all, and she asked, asked him, she said, just exactly where are you? <clears throat> he told her, he said, well, I'm sitting down here right below the Brown School. The Brown School was up on a hill about 100, 150 feet up. And she knew he was aboard the boat. And she asked him to repeat it. So he did. <laughs> and she got to giggling. But he said, well, I'm going to just stay here. He said, everything I got here, he says, I got a, got a power plant, shut the main engine down. He says, I got my own little diesel air-cooled power plant. He says, all my bedding, all my clothes, everything's here. I'm going to stay right there. So he did. Eventually, they jacked that power skull up. Some guy with uh, pressure control jacks, where you have one control system, one handle, all the jacks come up and they all equalize the pressure from one reservoir. They raise that power scout, put it on, turned it around, put it on rollers, took it up where the stoplight is now behind crafts, turned it, went down the hill with that big old power scout that went in the overhead wires in it. Took the thing over the boat harbor, run it down a ramp, set her in the harbor. What is now the Mecca? I uh, helped build that building. They helped build the Wadlinger building, the, the Wadlinger drugstore. Helped build the uh, Ship Tavern. Helped build the. Uh, they call it Henry's now. It used to be called uh, Solid's, and it was a, uh, a bar at that time. That opened one year after we started, and it opened. Uh, at, uh, and on March 27th, I think two years after the tidal wave, when we got that one open, I remember when the guys, it wasn't finished totally inside, but the owner said and advertised in uh, the guy's newspaper that uh, it would be open. Uh, before we got the businesses built up and everything, yeah, what you see now, they have what's called a plywood jungle. It was about four bars. One was Ships, one was Mecca, one was uh, Sollies, the Port or Forty, some other bar it used to be here. Breakers, I think it was. All built up. All they did is throw up a frame, set a building on what looked like a bunch of logs, throw a handful of sawdust on the floor, and start making drinks. And that was the bar. So what we call the plywood jungle. At that time, there was only one telephone in town, and uh, everybody line up, that was public phone, everybody line up to try and make calls out of town on that one. This was a year after the quake.
because it takes a while to get everything going. The, uh, wait a minute, City Market, where it's located now, had just opened, opened its doors up there. And it was a market. And the Navy was flying uh, plane loads of food into here and giving the freight to the city market. And they told her that if she raised the woman that owned it, her husband died, uh, Clymer was the one that owned it. They told her if she raised her prices, the Navy was going to charge her airfare for every plate and every pound that they brought in. So she did. She held them right there. 